Democrat John Corzine back on Capitol Hill yesterday. It was his first public appearance since CME Group Chairman Terry Duffy said he was told Corzine knew of a loan made by MF Global, directly contradicting what Corzine had said. Corzine, for his part, stuck to his story yesterday. Listen up. I don't know the source of the suggestion. Let me be clear. While the last few days of MF Global were chaotic, I did not instruct anyone to lend customer funds to MF Global or any of its affiliates, nor was I told that anyone had done so. The hearing also drew more attention to J.P. Morgan's role in MF Global's final days. Now, for more on MF Global, we are joined by former federal prosecutor Doug Burns. He's prosecuted and defended SEC cases, white-collar crime and fraud for more than two decades. So Corzine's third trip to the Hill, and he started naming names this time around, identifying someone in the back office, right? Well, it's so funny because he sort of had to, um, you know, as conversations come out about, you know, who spoke to who, all of a sudden, oh, yeah, he's naming a name. What was interesting about that, though, was that he first claimed that somebody in the back office assured him that the transaction was okay, which is really ridiculous for two reasons. Number one, the person is his subordinate, obviously, and number two, they're not a lawyer, but then conveniently came in and, oh, by the way, I also spoke to the general counsel. The reason that's important is that in white collar crime, you have advice of counsel defense. In other words, if a lawyer tells you something's okay, that can be a That's defense. That's the key, right? Can be a defense. But now other people are getting named. Does it actually matter whether it's the back office, the mid office, the middle office, the risk manager? He's ultimately the CEO. All of this rolls up into him. So isn't John Corzine culpable? Well, that's the point. In other words, somebody the other day said something about the C-level suite of the building. It might have been you. You know, the CEO, the CFO, the COO, they can't just parade in there and say, I don't know anything. Isn't these are that the, the reason they get paid the big bucks? These, because they're in charge? Theoretically, they are A, in charge of everybody, and B, monitoring what's going on each day. Exactly. So this has been working two sides of the argument. In other words, it's so interesting. On Monday, I'm a brilliant executive, you know, at the helm of a really complicated company involved in futures trading, and we're a broker-dealer. But then on Tuesday, I don't know anything, absolutely nothing. So it's been really theater of the absurd on yeah. some level. That tone has really shifted along, and he was using very super hedged language earlier on uh, when he was on Capitol Hill. Yesterday, he used the word explicitly, which kind of struck my attention. Well, yeah, I mean, I'll give you a couple of hypotheticals, which, with the caveat that I don't mean it necessarily applying to there. But if you say, you'll find this There's interesting, Stephanie, you ready? I did not direct anybody to do anything. You yourself could have done it. Uh, you follow me? Right. I didn't direct yes. anybody to do something. If I myself did it, then that statement is true. And the motivation Excuse of John me. Corzine versus a back office person. Who's got more to lose well, here? Well, right. I said that the other day. In other words, you know, on a routine conference call, somebody from MF said he knew about the $175 million loan right. from customer accounts. He then comes in and says, no, I didn't. Okay.